Hey friends, it's Carol Saltbox, Saltbox Stitcher, Carol Saltbox, Saltbox Carol, <laughs> all of the above. We're going to try to do another video. We did one last week and it didn't, it, it took, but the sound was all messed up. So here we go again. So what episode is it, dear? <clears throat> You'll need pencil and paper. Okay, pencil and paper. Although it's just an itty bitty bit of math. Okay. Mostly history, etymology, which is kind of like meanings vocabulary, of words. meanings yeah. of words, the history of the word, and just a little bit of math. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Four score and 70 years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Four score and seven. You said seven. But anyway, go ahead. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Gettysburg Address. Abraham Lincoln. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. That's the history part, I take it. Yes. Oh, and I left out the scripture part. Okay. In uh, Psalm 90, verse 10, the years of our life are threescore plus ten. Okay. Or, even by reason of strength, hang in there, Stitcher, 80, uh, by strength, fourscore. Okay. And they... Oh, it's four score, yet their span is but all toil and trouble. That's true. <laughs> toil, toil, stitching. And they are gone, and they are soon gone, and we fly away. Okay. So we got the Gettysburg Address, we got Psalm. Okay. Write down your birthday. My birthday? Birth date. I mean, how old you were on your last birthday? I just had one, so 72. Whew, I'm having trouble with this one. Too complicated. Okay. Uh, what number? Oh, no. Add to that a score, as in 20 years. four score. 20 years is a score. Plus a half of a score. 10 years. Add that together. 102. Ding, 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 ding. Very good. Actually, I knew those clues. We just did this last week. But I let him have his fun. Oops, sorry. Okay, silence my phone. First of all, I just said, we did a video last week, went to play it back, and the sound was really messed up. It was very crackly. And... As technologically savvy as my husband is, there was no way he could overdub it or whatever. I guess I could have muted it and you could have all tried to guess what I was saying. <laughs> but didn't want to do that. I was going to show this in my gifts. My husband, okay, this is kind of a long story. Okay, let me do this first. I have a lot of people ask about this quilt. And I knew I did it years ago. I hand pieced it, hand quilted it, and I still love it. I put it up periodically. And it is from this book, Christmas or Not. It's by the gals that used to make up Red Wagon, which were Jerry Kimmel, Linda Brannick, and Jan Paddock. Christmas or Not. I love these old Jan Paddock books. So here's the one I did. It's, it's all templates. You have to add your seam allowance to your templates or you can do it great big. It's an old book, Christmas or Not. I could do every one of them in here because I love them. Anyway, this came out I'm sure in the 90s, um, 1991, so, and I bought it new, <laughs> what does that tell you? Okay, so wanted to do, 
talk about that. The next thing I wanted to talk about was um, years ago while perusing Scarlet Letters um, website, they had a place where you could buy antique samplers. And there was an antique sampler that was um, Susanna, no, I thought it was Susanna. Was it Susan? Susan Howe Whitchurch. Now, it's not something she reproduced because it was in such bad shape. But at the time, she was selling Susan Howe Whitchurch, 1822. Obviously, that's my last name. I married into it. There is a Whitchurch, England, so there could be other samplers out there with um, made by a girl with the last name Whitchurch. I don't know. But long story short, I told him, would you please buy this for me? It was maybe $600, I want to say. And he said, okay. <laughs> he never did. Sometime after that, I was looking at the website and it was sold. Now, you can still see it on that website, but it's not available to purchase. So anyway, he's kind of been sorry for years. And not that I was going to reproduce it, but that was one. I don't collect antique samplers. But if I did, that would definitely be one that I would want to collect. Anyway, so he decided for my birthday to make a, this is a little notebook with parts from Susan Howe Whitchurch, 1822. And then he also put salt box stitcher on there. And then there's a matching mug with the same salt box stitcher. And how would you? So I think that's kind of cool. Anyway, what? When I was a little girl, my name wasn't Witchurch when I was a little girl. Oh, he's reminding me that when I was a little girl, I used to say my name was Susan. I was probably up until like age three. My mom would, you know, somebody would say, "Well, what's your daughter's name?" And I would say, "Susan." She said. Your name is not Susan. Oh, yes, it is. My name's Susan. So I was crazy even back then. Anyway, what have I been stitching? That's what I want to get to um, this right away. And then I'm going to talk. This won't be a really long video. Um, he's busy. I'm busy. It's just hard to spend too much time for him editing. So hopefully we'll get through this and the sound will be okay and it'll get uploaded at some point. But what am I, but what have I been stitching? Well, I had three more new starts, like a crazy person. I, I read you the definition of crazy last time, so now you know. The first one that I started was uh, Dorothy Masterton. Now these aren't necessarily in, or I said the first one I started. This is one of the three that I started. Dorothy Masterton by the Scarlet Letter. I've had this kitted for years and basically, um, I don't think there's any over one, but there is a uh, back stitch, uh, satin stitch and four sided stitch. So, and then I'm doing this on a piece of Lakeside Linen Fawn, F-A-W-N. Oh, thank you, dear. Here you go, Susan. <laughs> if anybody out there knows where Susan is, help us track her down. The antique. Anyway, I'm doing this on 40 Count Lakeside Fawn, F-A-W-N. I do think it's vintage fawn. I don't have a huge start. I did add some color on the flowers on the border. And I'm using the Avera Soie Soie silks. It's a lot more colorful than it looks in the picture. The picture makes it look like it's really brown, but it has this beautiful blue, a couple blues, um, some golds and orangey reds, so it's, it's got a lot of fall colors, so I really like that. The next one I started is um, Sarah Williams Hollyhead or Holyhead. This is by Cross Stitch Antiques. 
another really pretty now this also doesn't have any over one and the count on this is 237 by 242 so it's not humongous I mean it's a large sampler but not humongous so it's supposed to be stitched or the called for is 40 count Zweigart but I have decided to do it on 46 count buttercream by Lakeside and that's what I have finished I enjoy using 46 especially if there's no over one and I add a little color so you can see how bright those colors are going to be and I'm also using the Averisla silks on that And my third start is a fall one, and this one is A Witch in Her Garden by Brenda Gervais. And I do have the velveteen and the pumpkin stem, and I have the little candle stand to finish it. And I'm using, it's a combination of Overdyes and DMC, as, as it calls for. I'm running out of ring, <laughs> those bigger rings. I have some great big rings, but I don't have a lot of the medium size. I need to order some. So I had to use a small ring, which is kind of hard to manage all these tags from the flosses. And this is where I am on this one. This one I'm using 36 count vintage country mocha. So she's headless. I'm working on her dress. There's a lot of sunflowers, and let me see, I don't have the full picture. I don't know what I did with that. It must be still in my sewing room. But there's a lot of sunflowers and these uh, pumpkins that are stacked. There's two of those. So that's kind of fun, working on that one. And by the way, while I'm talking about it, I have um, the quilts that were purchased from me uh, in the summer. I have two more about ready to go to be mailed and then the only ones they're all quilted I'm just working on the binding I have the last three ones which are great big but they're all for one customer so these two that I have ready to mail out after that they'll just be that last customer so thank you for your patience they have, they are gradually getting finished and mailed so thank you okay the next thing I've been stitching um, kind of concentrating on the first one is my um, Jane Atkinson I love this piece I really would love to finish this by the end of the year I, I don't know there's a lot of over one that tree in the middle is huge this is by the Scarlet Letter and again I'm using the Averisois Soirée And this is the whole thing. It's kind of long and skinny, actually. And this is where I've been concentrating down here at the bottom. So I did the flowers here, and I'm working on the bottom flowers. This one is finished right there and then I'm working on that middle one and then there's another one that's very similar to this first one and then there's a few flowers oops there's a few flowers here and then the, another one here and then I'll start working on the middle section and there's a lot of grass a lot that tree is big so and then there's a lot of over one I will start working on the over one. In fact, I'm thinking of having like an over one Saturday. If I'm able to like w stitch all day, um, I can't always do that, but if I can stitch all day on a Saturday, because 
I don't, I've gotten to the point where over one words don't bother me, but they are more time consuming because I'm using a hoop and I'm going in and out. Where when I'm normally stitching one over two, I'm stitching in hands. So it goes a little faster. But anyway, I've been really concentrating on that one. And the other one that I've been concentrating on, and I'm determined to finish this one by the end of September, is Anne Grimshaw, also by The Scarlet Letter. I started this one in 2018, I'm embarrassed to say. So five years, I think, is probably enough time to finish the sampler. This is on 36 count pecan butter by Lakeside, and I'm using Gloriana Antique Black. So, it is basically finished, except for, there are some letters. Now, there's not the whole alphabet, so I'm thinking these were probably initials. But there's letters kind of sprinkled around, and those are eyelet stitches. I think I counted there's like 16 letters. Now, all of the... Uh, letters or words that are inside the motifs I have finished. It's just these little single ones. Let's see, where's another one? Like T, D, and H, and then over here, D. So those I need to finish. And the other thing I need to finish is her name, which is over one right down here. But all the motifs are finished. So I should be able to finish that in the month of September. I'm trying to hold it up so you can see it all. It's big, especially since it's on 30, especially since it's on 36 count. Sometimes, sometimes when you hold things in front of you and the mic can't pick it up, so then you kind of go silent. So hopefully I, it's a beautiful piece. I love this on this pecan butter. It just kind of really goes well together. So I, what I worked on was those bottom half motifs and the last couple alphabets. So seriously, this is really close. And I just may have that framed right away. We'll see. Um, I'm going to take a quick break and then I'm going to show you the things that I want to start because I still want to do a couple starts and um, things I got in the mail. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I wanted to show you a few things that I want to start. There's about six things here. I actually don't like to start things. I love to kit things up and I love once I'm kind of into a sampler. For me, doing the border first is just kind of like eating my vegetables and just, you know, doing my duty. Get the border and then once I'm into the motifs, then I get really into a sampler. Um, but I don't mind doing the border. It's still stitching, so it doesn't bother me. So this is one I want to start. This is Eliza Scattergood by Plum Street. This is an older chart. You might have trouble getting this one. I don't know. Eliza Scattergood. And it says, When I survey this work of mine, I'm filled with joy and dread. May Christ my life with his entwined before my day's last thread. It's kind of fall to me. It has the squirrel with the acorn, um, the roof is kind of goldish. It has this little couple up here, which I love funky people. I don't like real looking people on samplers, but I like funky people. So Eliza Scattergood, I'm definitely gonna start this. This is a piece of Vintage Light Exemplar by Lakeside. I think I've told you before, I have quite a bit of Lakeside because I have a good friend who um, 
told me years ago, she's like, you need to start buying Lakeside whenever you can find it. And at that time, you could get it on one, two, three stitch. It wasn't that hard to get. So, Which, by the way, will you go get that little sampler that Ruth made me? It's on my sewing table. I mean, my long arm. It's on my long arm cutting table. Not the long arm. It's in my long arm room. That's what I meant to say. So that's one I want to start. Another one I want to start. And I just may start all these. I mean, you know, there's no law. <laughs> the next one is Frederica by Carriage House. And this one, um, I just love. Oh, I really like the folk art look of Carriage House. Um, And I've done Frederick. I brought him out to show you. And so I thought of taking him to be framed, but I decided I want to wait till she's finished so I can get the same frame. Or I'll go ahead and order, get him framed and order a second frame because they're exactly the same size. The real difference obviously is one's a girl and one's a boy, but Behind the diamonds on Frederica, it's filled in. But on Frederick, it's not. So I'm not sure. You know, in a way, it makes her a little more tailored, I guess, or finished. So I thought about doing, although it's a lot of stitching. So I may not fill it in and then after the fact, I mean, after I finish, then look at it and say, hmm, should I fill it in or not? So anyway... That's Frederica. I have a piece of pecan butter by Lakeside that is the same. It's from the same cut as what I stitched him on and the same threads. Okay. The next one I really want to start, this is uh, Mary Hill. This is by Needlework Press, and this was one of the um, kits from Country Sampler. I think it was the Schoolgirl Club, Mary Hill, 1854. A friend of mine was stitch that lives in Atlanta, Linda, was stitching this when we were at that Jacksonville retreat. I don't know if she had <coughs> the kit from Country Sampler. Anyway. It came all kitted. I'm not sure what the linen is. It looks like some, maybe a fox and rabbit or a seraphim. I'm not sure. With the overdyed cottons. So Mary Hill, 1854. Love it. It's not really huge. 40 count, it's nine, nine by 12 about. <coughs> um, the next one I wanna start. Are you counting? Because if you are, you might as well stop because I just want to start them all. This is Sarah Marple by Northumberland Sampler House. And the other reason I want to start all these is because then, and yes, then I'll have a lot of whips. So, um, but I don't care because they've already been started. In many cases, I've started the border, which is where I usually start. So I've got the rhythm of the border and I have it all, you know, it's all sized on the linen, all of that. So it's really easy for me to just like jump right in. Even if I only spent a couple days on it in the future. Will they all get finished? I hope, you know, that's my hope. No, none of us is guaranteed tomorrow. So who knows, but I hope. So Sarah Marple, 1830 by Northumberland Sampler House, and you can find, uh, she has an Etsy store. So, and this one I have a piece of just, uh, I think it's platinum by Zweigart. It's not an overdyed, and it's 40 count. I have a huge chunk of that, so I wanna use that, and I'm using DMC. So, that's ready to go. The last one that I really, really want to start, and Lori from 
Homespun Prints by Lori. She's a designer as well as she does some great Instagram posts. She just finished this. Barbara Anna, um, Portuguese bird sampler. I don't know if this is I don't know if this is a reproduction or an original. I kind of think it's probably an original. Portuguese bird sampler by Barbara Anna Designs. And this one I'm also using Light Exemplar by Lakeside. And I am using all the DMCs for this too. This has a lot of tans and browns and just a little bit of teals and greens. But if you go to Homespun Prims by Lori on Instagram, she recently posted her finish of it. So I really, I've, I've wanted to do this one for a long time. I just think it's very folk art. Just, I love it. Love the colors. And the next one, which has similar colors, uh, Lori from Mischievous Stitches did this a while back. Another Barbara Anna. This is all, no, this is the fall. And this one is all done with um, anchor threads. I don't have them on floss drops yet, but very similar colors to that Portuguese bird sampler. So these are all anchor threads. And this one I have a piece of colonial parchment. Oops by um, Fabrics by Stephanie. So that'll look great. So that's another one I really want to start. So I'm going to show you um, a couple things that I got in the mail and a couple gifts. The first one, and I don't want to take this out of the bag, but this is the Dying to Stitch kit. This is the, um, what is the name of this? Sampler Sewing Circle. The pattern is actually by Hobby House, Kathy at Hobby House. She did the, she designed the chart, but the kit is from Dying to Stitch. I don't know if you can still get in this club or not. Has some really pretty vibrant colors. It'll be a nice, I love this pillow. It'll be a nice one to do next spring. And the fabric is, uh, I'm not sure what the fabric is. I don't know if it says. Anyway, usually Dying to Stitch kits have R&R &R fabric since that's their company. So I got that. Um, I showed you this and the mug. And then I got a lovely gift from Laura, excuse me, Lori Sykes. She's on YouTube, My Crazy Life. And she designed this calendar book for keeping track of your stitching. And it's a month at a time, which I really like. And then within it are various um, charts. That particular one is by Bendy Stitchy. So there's um, places where you can make notes, stitch alongs, challenges, finishes. It's really laid out very, very nice and I will be using this next year because this is the 2024 version. And um, you can get this at Evertote Colorado Cross Stitcher or, or directly from her Etsy store. So I'll put that up there. So it's a good time to order now so that you'll have it when um, 2024 begins. The other thing I got was from my, my good friend Ruth and um, 
funny thing is, this is one day she was over, and we, she knows, and she has a very exhaustive, um, not exhaustive. I don't know what I say. Anyway, she has a lot of blackbird. I also have a lot of blackbird. Hers aren't all kitted though. So we were going through my blackbird boxes and I came across a design called Evergreen. Now this was a loose feathers. It's probably out of print, but it's called Evergreen. You'd have to get it on the secondary market. I didn't bring my pattern out. So she was teasing me and she said, you should stitch this, it's not very big. I said, yeah, but the kid is like 30 count linen or 30, 28 count linen and you'd have to use two strands and I just, you know, mm -hmm. and she's like, you should stitch it. She's like, well, I'm gonna get my pattern out. I'm gonna stitch it. And I said, okay, I'll probably get it out too and stitch it. I never did that. So when she finished it, she framed it and gave it to me. <laughs> now I need to stitch it for her. So in the middle of the basket, she put BA to stand for Barb Adams, who, who was the designer from Blackbird that passed away. And then she put her initials over here and my initials over here. And then she finished it in 2022, but she just recently had it framed. I love it and I am <laughs> I'm so glad she went ahead and stitched it and gave it to me so she gave me this as my birthday gift so thank you Ruth that was very very kind so that is all I have I was going to tell you a funny story so um, I was watching Floss Boss and Cousins which is Christy and Callie and um, I love the name Callie. For years, if I'd had another daughter, I would have named her Callie because I love that name. Just reminds me of a little girl back on the prairie wearing a pinafore. <laughs> Not that you're like that, Callie, but that's what the name kind of pictures in my mind. But anyway, long story short, I'm watching Floss Bossing Cousins and for S Floss Bossing Cousins. For some reason, my name came up. I don't know if they were quoting something I said or whatever. And Christy said, that Carol Saltbox Stitcher, she is the OG. So I thought to myself, OG, oh, hmm, wonder what, I don't know what that means. I mean, it was very complimentary, obviously, though in her tone and everything. So I thought, well, I know what G-O-A-T is greatest of all time. Like, you know, Tom Brady's the GOAT you know, greatest of all time. So I thought, well, maybe OG is short for oldest, greatest of all time. <laughs> so I was with a bunch of friends, we were stitching, and I said, does anybody know what OG stands for? And everybody's like, no, no. So one gal's like, I'll Google it, you know, of course. She says, oh, it means original gangster. <laughs> Oh, that just absolutely cracked me up. Actually, it's gangsta. So, thanks, Christy. <laughs> I'll be the either the old goat or the great or uh, the original gangster. That is just too funny. So, anyway, I have that's all I have. Um, I think my husband will probably insert some pictures and put some names on some of the pieces. I don't know if we're always going to put the name on a pattern. Um, if I hold up a pattern and it's just something I plan to stitch, maybe we need to do that. I don't know. We it's do. up to the editor. Yeah, whatever. We might have to break my contract if it's up to the editor. <laughs> it should be up to the uh, floss tuber. I don't know. It's messing. Um, I hope you all have a good rest of the couple weeks. and. I think I'm just going to say from now on, I'm not going to necessarily schedule to be back every two weeks. He's teaching and he has a lot of things he has to do for his classes. Plus, he's still working at the wood store. So I'm just not sure we'll do it every two weeks. Maybe we'll come back in a week and then maybe three weeks. So just um, I'll be back whenever. 
So hopefully I can come back in two weeks, so we'll see. Um, the other thing I wanted to answer, because this is all a lot of times people ask, this is on Redware Road by the Scarlet House. It's very fall. One of these days I'm going to get my fall decorations out, my pumpkin people and all of that. I just haven't had time to do it. So um, it's just been a busy week. We had I had my birthday. We had um, the grandkids on Friday night. We had uh, Saturday I got together with my stitching friends that meet once a month. Thursday I was together with other stitchy friends. Sunday was um, go out to dinner and all that for my birthday with family. So it's just been busy. So anyway, I hope things settle down in a little bit. It has gotten cooler here, so that's kind of nice. I actually ran out to the grocery store yesterday and I thought, oh, this is like pleasant. Like low 80s, which is very pleasant. So anyway, I will see you when I see you. And actually, I don't see you. You see me. That's just how it is. So um, hopefully you're having um, lots of time to get lots of stitching done. So love you. Bye.